Today on WBON TV, I sit down with ex Cincinnati Red and current Arizona Diamondback Adam Rosales to hear a little bit about Sandlot Nation and his performance in the playoffs last year. Life can be so hectic. The most important moment in my life is my escape. The moments when I'm free from all of the notifications. The moments when I'm with you. You are my escape. Carissa Boutique. Simply unforgettable. Exclusively at Gwen's Fine Jewelers in Richmond, Kentucky. Tristan Reynolds here with Major League veteran Adam Rosales. Adam, how are you? Doing well. Thanks for having me. Man, no problem. So this, of course, is the off-season, spring training around the corner. What do you do in the off-season to stay in shape? Well, I do a, a lot of things. A lot of uh, This is a time where you want to build muscle, right? And you do your best to do that. I actually have a, a good uh, strength conditioning coach. He's actually in Chicago, but he actually flew out last weekend to help me out a little bit to um, just make sure I'm moving correctly, right? It doesn't matter how much you really lift it if you're not moving properly. So he really makes sure that I'm in alignment. It's like, like taking a car into the shop almost, you know, to make sure that you're in alignment. So that's what I do a lot of, a lot of conditioning and obviously a lot of baseball oriented stuff, you know, just taking ground balls, getting my arm back in shape. And, and I'm down here in Arizona, so I'm in the warm weather. I usually spend my off seasons up north in either Salt Lake or Chicago or Cleveland. So it's nice to be down here in Mesa. I would think, yeah, it's probably uh, baseball weather year-round. Yeah, it is. It's beautiful. I mean, it's, it's a little chilly in the morning. It's it's, a, it's about 50 degrees. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Nice, yeah, thanks. <laughs> it's 8 degrees here in the morning. but I uh, uh, no. <laughs> so, you know, it's funny. When our paths crossed last, you were sort of new to the Major League game, and now you're kind of a veteran going on, I guess, your 10th season of Major League Baseball. What's what's the best part? What do you what you know? What's the coolest thing about being a major league baseball player? For me personally, the coolest thing about being a major league baseball player are the teammates that I get to meet and build relationships with, that and just connect with them and get to learn from them. I think that's the coolest thing. And then besides that, it would be traveling to see new cities or adventuring into the city. The new obviously the ballparks are always beautiful, but like actually going to see like the different cultures of different cities is probably it's pretty neat uh the big cities in america definitely very nice so you know at the moment you're a free agent um any inclination at all where you might be going or at this point it's waiting for the agent just waiting for the agent wait, waiting to see what happens waiting for phone calls and just um Obviously, it's a little. Uh, every year, it seems like it keeps it getting later and later. <laughs> and I think I think it uh, it worries my wife more than anybody. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> but it's you know it's baseball. You know, we, you never know where we're going to be day day to day, especially in my position. No doubt. Um, you've had a lot of uh, longevity to your career, which I guess, if my math is good, which it's usually not, is a ten year career uh, going into this season. What do you credit that type of longevity when, you know, most people don't don't last that long? Well, I think it goes back to your first question about what I do in the off season. It's all about preparation and surrounding yourself with the right people, you know, um, learning how to improve, make those small adjustments, but really taking care of yourself and staying healthy. And that my strength conditioning coach, Mark Sitch in Chicago, really has helped me a lot to stay healthy, do the right, prepare the right way so I'm ready for a you know, the, the 162 game plus season. That is a phenomenal season. I mean, when you're younger, it seems like, yeah, it's, you're playing baseball, it's fun, which all that's true, but that's a grueling long season. Yeah, for sure. That's why it's good. Like, you know, they talk about team chemistry, about how important that is. I mean, that's a difference of – team chemistry can be a difference of five, ten games, right? That doesn't sound like too much at 162, but that's – if you win five or ten more games because you can stick together as a team, because you understand the grind, you understand that you have to be in this together, it's it's a lot more rewarding, that's for sure. Well, and you might be able to speak to this, but I think there's a lot of truth to that as somebody that's played athletics my entire life. You know, when you've got a group of guys that are all pulling in the same direction and rooting for each other and you've got some good clubhouse guys, that beats the heck out of a lot of talented people that could care less about each other. 
Yeah, there's no question. I mean, obviously you have to have talent on the team for sure. But like when you come together as a, a group and have a sole purpose to come out and expect to win every night, like it's it's fun, man. It's it's exciting, and it, you know when September comes around, it's not it's not really grindy. It's it's more like all right, what's we're gonna win today, and it's that's when baseball is really fun, and that's what I got to experience with the Diamondbacks last year. Just a great group of guys, just got each other's backs, always learning. You know, JD Martinez, uh, Paul Goldschmidt, they always have their notebooks, learning, and just uh, just in the hitters' meetings, the things they were saying too, just little the little the little stuff that you pick up. Even though I've been in, in the major leagues on and off for 10 years, you're still learning a ton. Yeah, what do you notice is the biggest difference? I mean, it's a great point of the, your team last year. I mean, really, you could just sense the chemistry when you watch the game on TV. But what's the difference, or what would you say is the biggest difference between a team that's maybe a 500 team versus a team that's really going to the playoffs, and you guys were so close to the World Series? Um, I mean, there's a lot of things you can say, like a lot of intangibles you can say. But I mean, you gotta have good leadership. You gotta have good experience. Like people have to have been to the playoffs before. I think um, that that definitely helps. And just a, just more. I don't know. I think experience is the number one, and leadership. Let's go hand in hand. Very nice. And you had some pretty important at bats. Uh, I think you got a start last year in the ALDS against Kershaw. What was that like going up to him in those high pressure situations and and facing him at the plate? Well, facing Kershaw, no matter what, it's uh, <laughs> it's a little stressful. But I mean, like a if you, I mean, if, those guys are supposed to get you out, right? You got for me. I've always liked facing big, bigger time, bigger name pitchers like that because. For me, I feel like I got nothing to lose against guys like that, you know. But in the NLDS, it was obviously you're more amped up. It's at Dodger Stadium. The bright lights are on. You know, you got your family in town to see you what play in a playoff game. It just it was special. But yeah, you got to find a way to slow it down and, and make it. You know, the, the bases are still 90 feet. The the plate's still 17 inches. The mound's still 60. 60 feet, 6 inches from you, so it's the same game. You just got to slow it down, but yeah, definitely a lot more exciting to face guys like Clayton Kershaw. Yeah, and you, uh, d- correct me if I'm wrong, you reached base twice, right, in uh, in the LDS against Kershaw? Uh, I uh, I got walked, but, and then I, well, actually, yeah, I did. Well, I, got, I got on base on an error, too. Yeah. Hit the third base, but... Yeah, so I reached base safely twice. So good on base percentage versus Kershaw in the in the well, series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know about those air like getting on base on air. I don't think that counts. But yeah, walk though. I drew you know a decent walk. Awesome. Well, uh, shifting subjects a little bit. You are the founder of Sandlot Nation. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it's been really neat. Over the last two years, we we started back when I was playing for the Padres back in 2016. And just basically go out into the local communities and just go play a pickup game of baseball like we did when we were kids. That I don't think is as prevalent nowadays. They don't. A lot of kids are, you know, you have to be on a club team. or It, it just includes more people. We're just trying to promote the game of baseball. And recently we've been doing events to raise money. Um, we did one in Salt Lake City this year. And we raised some money that we're actually going to go play a game very soon. Um, this weekend, actually, we're going to go play a game in like an underserved community, underserved baseball community in Guadalupe, in the Tempe area in, here in Arizona. And we had people were, were joining forces with great people like uh, Champ Pro Sports. They donated um, some equipment, some catcher's equipment. Um, and then Easton Bat Company, they donated some bats. Lizard Skin's been great. Like we just have all these sponsors come together to give a little bit more of an opportunity to more of like underserved communities and obviously having these fundraisers has definitely helped out a lot too man that's awesome and you make such a great point and you found such a real need in that it seems like when you and i like you said we're kids man i was always outside playing baseball even with two or three or four people in ghost men you know, and yeah. and nowadays you just don't see kids outside, certainly in groups doing anything. It's inside, it's video games, you know, it's cell phones. So, man, what a phenomenal thing to get involved in. 
Yeah, that's what I mean. We definitely want to see it grow too. We want to we want to eventually have little like actually Sandlot leagues, you know, like Mesa League and the against the Tempe League, you know, like yeah, it just be like it's your community. I, I think that's I mean, you watch the movie The Sandlot; it's their it's their little town. That um, but really just to give players young players opportunities to love the game that I love so much that has helped me become who I am today. Very nice. And obviously folks watching this may want to get involved. So what's the best way if somebody wants to get involved in their community or uh, at least maybe help out with the donation, what's the best way to do that? Oh, we have, a, we can visit sandlotnation.org or you can, you can email. I have a, a teacher from San Diego. She's actually does a great job for us. She, she does all the management for it. You can email her at Laura at sandlotnation.org and just a lot more information if you want it. You can just email us so, or just check out the website and there's our contact information as well. Okay. And, the, and you can follow us. I mean, follow us on Instagram, see what we're doing. See our little, um, that, that always helps too, to, to understand what we're doing and how we're giving back. Very good. And the actual website is sandlotnation.org. Yep. And you mentioned if you'd like to email, uh, that would be laura at sandlotnation.org. Is that right? That's correct, yep. Very cool. Well, hopefully we can get some uh, folks involved in that. And, you know, in our little media outfit here in Kentucky, if there's ever anything we can do, we'd love to help you out with that as well. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you so much, Tristan. Surely. Um, uh, with that, uh, best of luck this season. You know, we always look forward to following your career, and uh, my wife actually looks forward to uh, seeing what your family's up to and wanted me to compliment your beautiful family. So I told uh, her thank you so much. <laughs> I would pass that on, and she wanted me to, a- to ask, this is a wife question, do you uh, still come out to Dave Matthews? <laughs> I don't. I, I mean, to Ants Marsh, I always did. Um I did a lot my first couple of years in the in the major leagues. Actually, um, come out to a Red Hot Chili Peppers song recently. It was actually a Red Hot Chili Peppers song that I that I like listening to in Louisville, Kentucky, before I got called up. And I went back to that because I felt like it was just a good luck good luck song. But I might be changing it back to Dave Matthews now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, very nice. Well, I tell you what, hopefully we can do this again, and hopefully uh, maybe at the end of the season it can be World Series champion Adam Rosales, and we can talk about how cool that was. All right, let's, let's make sure we talk then. Yeah, sounds great. Adam, thank you All so right. much for uh, joining us here on WBON-TV. Well, thank you so much for having me. For more great stories like these, tune in to WBON-TV.com. I'm Trisden Reynolds.